get that chat up. What's up, buddy? Come on, you can come in. You wanna come say hi? Come on. How's my little man? Oh shit. Oh fuck. What happened to your foot? What happened, buddy? The day I see your fall. Hi guys. I'll be back. My cat's foot is bleeding for some reason. One second, guys. I got. Hey, what happened to your foot? Let daddy see. Let daddy see. One second. What happened? Let's see which paw is it. Let's see. Daddy's gonna be gentle. I gotta, gotta make sure you're okay. Now come here. Come here. Daddy, take care of you. Shit, you get blood everywhere. It's okay. It's okay. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Shit. April! I know, I know, you don't like me held like this.
one second, guys. I, uh... One second. Cat cut himself. So, uh, sorry for dip setting like that. Uh, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, uh, my cat, Achilles, ripped his toenail, and so there's like a trail of blood. You can actually see on my arm here a little bit of the blood as we were holding him down to, to treat it. Um, Uh, this is a, a restream tool. All my subscriptions start with an A. Uh, how did it happen? I don't know. Um, he was meowing at the door. I thought he wanted to come in, and he was actually just in pain. So as you can see, I have quite a few subscriptions. They don't all start with A. I something happened to the cat and uh, what actually happened was uh, there's a cockroach <laughs> that April is screaming about right now I don't know if you do you guys hear that it sounded like bloody fucking murder to me um, who anyhow I, so originally I was signing on to answer questions and we got kind of sidetracked by life um, that's okay that shit happens um, here we are uh, so let's get back on track April's grabbing the spray for the roach. Um, what an eventful start to day 28. <laughs> I thought it was, dude, I was just as shocked by what, I don't know what's going on, boys. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I, got, I got little paw, blood paw prints here and in the hallway, I got some cat blood on me. It's, it's eventful, April's screaming like, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's something. It's something. Um, so, um, any questions? Uh, yeah, let's say hi to Aurora. Am I saying that? Or Aura? I'm gonna say it's Aura. Hi, Aura. I didn't realize you had a daughter, Kevin. I did not know that. Godless Monkey, welcome, welcome. So today what we're going to be doing once April gets in here is uh, we're actually going to go through the JavaScript section of W3 Schools so she can... You got a six-year-old and a two-year-old. Nice, man. Good for you. Um, I'm one of those people who... And everyone has told me that eventually my mentality will change, but... Um, I'm 29, and this could be because I feel like maybe I'm not, I've always been kind of a logical person, and I just started getting my life together probably in the last two years, so if I had my life together for maybe about five more years, I might consider having children, but uh, I don't know, I've never, I've never felt that need quite yet. Um, we'll see, we'll see. It'll be interesting, I don't know that I want a little me. That someone asked that came up. This conversation came up today at work. So, um, for those of you who don't know, April and I have been um, dating for about six years. So since I've been 23, I'm 29 now. Uh, we've been dating for six years. Um, we've had our, our rough parts, but for the most part, that's accurate. And for most people, 
Six years, you're married. Most people. For me, uh, I think we're just getting started. <laughs> I don't think it's a commitment thing. I just can't see the point of getting married yet. Um, we'll see. I don't know, man. Maybe it is a com- commitment thing. Um, how do we get started on this? Hello, Aurora. I hope you're having a wonderful day with your dad. And I hope he's teaching you JavaScript. <laughs> I hope he's teaching you JavaScript and how to become a programmer. Um, is six too young to teach somebody to code? Probably is. What at what age do you start reading? Is it like it's probably around six, right? I think you have to know how to read before you can write and learn basic algebra. Um, kids equal no free time. Yeah. <laughs> my my room's nice and clean. Uh, yeah, it's it's cause uh, there's nothing in here right now except the whiteboard. Cause we're moving in two weeks or in ten days, nine days, nine days actually. Um, so we are getting situated. We uh, uh, so now that April, I've been holding off on buying some of the small things that I've been wanting for the office. Random questions, but when should you reach 500 plus connections? 500 plus connections on what? Um, on what specifically? Um, whew. I got, I, I'll admit it, man, I got a little bit of adrenaline going with the cat bleeding and... On LinkedIn? Um... Jim Shackelford says, are you going to work on the information security and quality assurance on the beta free code camp? I am indeed, um, James. I, I think that's great. What does my shirt say? He says, yes, I am a programmer and no, I don't care about your app ideas. <laughs> and then on the back, it says, let's see, not even for equity. <laughs> um, anyhow. Um, I'll, uh, for those of you who don't know, if you follow on the Facebook group, you might have noticed that I've been leaning towards selling some uh, coding shirts. Uh, so you might be seeing some of that in future videos. Um, I'm leaning towards everything said and done, a t-shirt being $25, tax, shipping, flat, done. That's what I'm leaning towards. Out the door, $25. Bucks, uh, you get a nice quality tee, and we go from there. Um, but I don't think there is a, I mean, 500 connections on LinkedIn, I don't think there's a point in time in which that's important because you really should be connecting with people in your field and that you know. Um, where did I get this one? This was actually made by a subscriber of mine who, um, who um, wanted me to, uh, wanted me to wear it for a video and I did and I think he got two sales out of it three sales out of it and so he sent me one um, but yeah so I'll probably be pushing a few shirts in the in the future um, for if, if if you guys know anything about YouTube the way that you make your money in YouTube isn't actually through ad revenue it's through utilizing the audience that you have in various ways um, whether that be promoting a business you're starting, a course you're selling, a t-shirt that you're selling, whatever it may be. And the, the key for that is to one, sell something that people would be interested and uh, two, uh, two, um, to, um, to make sure it's high quality so that uh, it's all about repeat business, just like repeat watch repeat views right so like I don't I don't really get anything out of you watching one video I want you to watch every video I post from the day you subscribe and so that's the same concept when you're when you're selling something as well this is all about repeat business uh, there might be a coding God t-shirt in the works uh, a, a couple different ones where uh, let's just say that there's a skit coming up if you if you guys are following i'm dropping hints boys i'm dropping hints about some epicness that's going to happen in about three to four weeks there's going to be some epicness if you've been following the facebook group i posted a few things earlier today dropping little breadcrumbs somebody might be putting together that something's in the works um 
But I got, I'm tying it all together. You guys think this Cody God thing just came out of nowhere? Uh, is Death Mountain and Way Up still your sponsors? So Way Up isn't a sponsor. I just put them on my thing because I get 75 cents to sign up. And I only get like $10 every three months from them. So I probably uh, won't do that in the future. But Death Mountain is a sponsor of mine. Uh, the only reason you don't see it on there is for some reason when I use Restream, the description uh, doesn't load a default. I have to figure out how to do that with Restream.io. So basically what I do is I just go in after and I copy and paste my standard uh, description in there to take care of it. But yes, Dev Mountain is still my sponsor. Uh, they actually just um, they just uh, renewed their sponsorship today. So uh, we go on a month to month basis, but I've been they've been my, my sponsor for quite some time. <coughs> we have a very, uh, I, think I, I think I give them a pretty sweet deal. Um, I think uh, everybody's happy, so I, I imagine they'll stay a sponsor for quite some time. Um, the only way that would change is if perhaps I want to start marketing the end of my videos for myself, at which point I may have to say, hey, I need to charge you more money or I got to take it away. I don't know. I, I'll figure something out. I plan on being sponsored by Dev Mountain as long as I can be because I, I like their product and they they have treated me well from day one. I'm a loyal guy. This is a thing, man. I'm a loyal guy and Dev Mountain sponsored your boy when he had like 6,000 subscribers. That's hard to get, man. Um, so anyhow, here we are. Coding Out t-shirt in the works. Um, how did I get Dev Mountain as a sponsor? You guys want me to give away all the hot tips? How do you get the screen? The chat on the screen. How do you do all this? Um, well, I emailed them. That was it. I emailed them. And uh, you like their product? I like, I like their boot camp. I've heard good things. I've talked with Engineer Truth who's been there. I've actually been to their campus in Salt Lake City. Um or excuse me provo utah by salt lake city uh when i went and hung out with uh matt in utah so i it was this is kind of funny i didn't want to come up i was like i um i was uh they didn't know matt and i knew each other when they sponsored me and then a week later i was at their campus and i was like hey thank you for the sponsorship by the way not like stalking here or anything, but I wanted to come by and say hi, see the campus that Matt's been at for the last <laughs> three months. But uh, but yeah, so that, that was kind of how that happened. Uh, it's a small town. Salt Lake City isn't, though. Salt Lake City was beautiful. I would love to live in Salt Lake City, man. That was my shit, man. Um, I would love to do that. I would actually love to work at one of them as well. Um, I wish they would just hire me. That'd be cool, man. Your boy just, I like literally, what if we just changed the Coding Tutorials 360 channel and instead all we did was we changed it to Dev Mountain. I got all the ad revenue and we just did it and at the end we promoted the fuck out of Dev Mountain every video, man. Just sell out completely. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I've always wanted to work at a coding boot camp, as a small note. Not necessarily as an instructor, but something. Um, I don't think they'd hired me as an instructor. I don't think I'm qualified enough to be an instructor. I really do think you, have, you should only be hiring senior developers as instructors for a lot of these things. Um, but, uh... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I wish one day I could work for Free Code Camp, though. That like, there's a couple companies I'd like to work for. At the top of the list is Free Code Camp. If Free Code Camp ever starts making some real money and they need somebody to do something, I'm I'm ready, man. Put me in, coach. This is this is the dream right now. I want I want to work with Free Code Camp. I want to. Uh, I'm just a believer, man. I like what they're doing. Um, go from there. Start coding. We're waiting on April right now. Uh, I'd also like to work for Code Academy. I think they're fucking up, and I think I could help them. <laughs> help out. You know how many? 
Most instructors are not senior developers. That's probably true, but I think they should be. So I'd be kind of a hypocrite not to. Yeah, I just want to see the new the new office plant. Bet y'all didn't know that your boy was kicking it all classy like this. The bamboo office plant. Look at that. Look at that. That looks fancy as shit, right? Uh, so not only are we gonna have not only are we gonna have the central air diffuser, we also have we we're setting up the whole we're setting up the whole garden here now, man. So this is Leafy. Leafy is um, they're twins. Uh, of bamboo. Um, now, I, I, uh, plants are supposed to be good for <laughs> for your offices. This is the only plant I think I couldn't, I wouldn't kill. It's pretty hard to kill bamboo. So I've been told I don't know it might die. <laughs> Who really knows? Uh, so far, so good though. It's only been two days, but I think it's doing pretty hot. Um, yeah, now that April uh, is working, I'm, I'm able to treat myself to a few things that I wasn't before. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to go buy two more 4K monitors. So that'll, that'll put me up to four 4K monitors. I have a stand coming in so that they're going to be mounted two and two. Um... So just small, not necessarily small, because I, I, that would have been $1,200 on monitors. But <laughs> um, really the only thing I spend money on is my computer and office. Everything else is eh. Uh, we got the green screen uh, that's coming. We got the new lights. April works uh, in an office. That's, that's really all I'll say about that. Uh, just because a lot of employers don't like you talking about stuff like that. Um, uh, so Josh, the reason I didn't get a mini cactus and I got bamboo instead is because I have cats and I don't want them, I don't want them to, uh, scratch their face on it. That's, that's the truth. Um, I don't think it's too stressful. Um, but I don't know, man. I'm feeling pretty stressed at my job. Um, yeah. You can see I'm breaking out. What, over here and here and here? Um, this is probably the second time in about eight months I've been stressed at work. Um... Which is all, all the more reason. I've been stressed for about a month at work. Uh, it's interesting, man, because I've never felt like this before. Um, so. It's interesting. We, there could be a whole video just about being stressed at work. And talking about that. Maybe I'll write that down. Uh, stress as in I don't know what I'm doing? No, I know what I'm doing. Or stress as in if I fuck this up, I might lose my job. Stress as in, uh, they're trying to sell an unfinished product? I guess? I, I don't know, man. It's just, there's just, like, we're starting to do a lot of meetings. We're starting to do a lot of presentations and stuff like that stresses me out. Babe, what are you doing? Come on in. Oh, let's go. I try to wipe it up with your eyes, though. All right. You ready? No. No? All right, so today, um, do you want me to put the webcam up or down for this? You're just sitting here? Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Just so they didn't want it on, so that's my house. Yeah. 
I was debating it, whether I could have it on or not, so I think I'd have to get it. Lawrence Wilson uh, will answer this question, and then uh, we're going to start our session here. And at the end, if there's any additional questions, we'll, we'll answer them. But he says, I work full time and I'm in school for coding. How much time should I spend coding to fully grasp the concepts? You should probably code a minimum of three hours a day. Um, but make sure you code every day. So even if you can't code the three, try and get your one in. Hi, Jordan. Hey, Achilles. How's our little battle ridden kitty? Is he doing okay out there? Yeah, he's there. I'm fine. Did you tell him? Yeah, I started this video and then I was like, holy shit, what's all this blood? Aurora says April is very nice and super funny. Oh, thank you. All right. Who's Aurora? That's his daughter. Oh. I'm six years old, I believe. Oh, I have six years. They're so sprite at that age. Just all about learning. Sprite? Yeah. Okay. Um. Hello, coding goddess. <laughs> uh oh. God over here is getting a little jelly. Alright, so let's talk about JavaScript. Hi, Dallas Monkey. Alright, so I'm gonna put this down. Because you need to focus, there's so much to cover. Alright, so we were talking yesterday about how you didn't understand. Um, or didn't know what is in JavaScript, essentially. what What's there for you to use. And it's up for you to decide how to use it. So we're going to go through all of this. Probably not today. Definitely not today. But that's our task. Today! <laughs> so let's see here. Introduction to output syntax. All right, we'll start with syntax. Uh, so What's output? It's console.log and stuff like that. Uh, don't worry about that. We're starting with syntax. So... Um, you know how to set variables and assign variables, right? And reassign and write strings with double quotes or single quotes. You can uh, do math operators. He's licking his blood. What do you want to do? Um, you can also create, if you're not going to assign values and you just want to create a bunch of undefined variables you can by putting a comma in between them. Oh, cool. Um, you How would you give value to those variables later? Like this, just reassign the value. Okay. Um, let's see, you, got, you know how to do comments. We've talked about camel case. The picture. All right, so DOM manipulation we've talked about before. We haven't done too much of it. Um, what it basically does is the document is the whole page, not the browser, but the page. Okay, and then you get element by ID. We'll then get the element. In this case, is demo and then it'll set a property of it. In this case, inner HTML, which is essentially what's inside of it. So even if we have test in here, and we run this, it's actually overriding and putting hello dolly. So that's the JavaScript working with the HTML to be dynamic. Cool. Yeah. Remember the light bulb on and off sort of thing? Exactly like that. Uh, you know, like you could take variables, and use it to add things together. Um, you know how to create functions. You can throw the, the DOM manipulation in the functions as well. Um, all right, uh, let's continue on. Comments, uh, we talked about single and multi-line. Multi lines uh, slash star, star slash variables. All right, so you have number, you create a variable, you can add variables. Um, you need assign value with equals. Um, 
you can create them and they'll just be undefined uh, oh, oh this looks pretty you can also declare a bunch of variables at once so you see for our person is equal to John Doe so comma that's car actually name. declaring them yes this is fine uh, you don't, I don't normally do this too much. I actually don't know if that's good convention or bad convention. I normally don't. And the reason for it, the reason for why I don't, is I like to go line by line to be able to better examine what my code is doing. This, to me, is a little more jumbled. Mm. But it is important to know that you can do this. But you can do it as like this as well. See? But you have to know... See, it, this might look like we're reassigning the value, value yeah. but we're actually just initially assigning it and creating yeah. a variable. Achilles! Achilles! Am I a... I was like, I'm not looking at you. Okay, so one thing to note is if you try to add a 5 string to a 2 and 3 number, what well, you're going to end up with is 55. Because these two are going to add together to make 5, and then this plus is going to concat it. I know, buddy, you hurt your paw. Yeah, that's something that uh, I did see when I was watching the video you sent me. Mm -hmm. Alright, the equals assignment operator. You can add, you can multiply, you can divide, subtract, modulus, modulus increment, and decrement. What's, what's this one do again? Adds, adds, one. adds one to the value, minus one to the value. And then you can do the same thing where uh, plus equals, there's also uh, minus equals, times equals, divide equals, modulo equals. Good. Just shorthand, basically. Um, there's some uh, comparison operators. We've talked a little bit about this. Double equals two checks. If the uh, value is equal, triple equals checks if the value and type. Can get him down, please? Come on, buddy. Um, there is uh, not equal, right? And then there's not equal equals, which is type and value. And so what's the difference between value and type? For what? In general. If value and type? Yes. Type can be like... String good and object. value value is the amount in which you give it value. Good, good, and the greater than less than, and then there's this ternary operator which. Huh? I see. Then there's a ternary operator, which uh, we'll talk about later. Um, so logical operators, this is something that you haven't been really working with yet and you should uh, when you should know that it works. So the and, if both sides of a statement are true. I kind of have. Okay, the or and then the not. So there's also two ways to check uh, the type of an object. You can say type of and then the variable and you'll get the value. And then there's instance of. This is for when you're checking if it's basically to check a class, which is. Uh, How so, do you use those? So let's say you wanted to make sure that you're getting the correct type of something. You'd say type of whatever your variable. We'll say variable is my array or my number. You want to check the type of it. If it's a number, it's going to return a number. If it's a string, it's going to return a string. Mm -hmm. So it's going to return what type it is. What was the bottom one? Instance of. Uh, this is for, you can create classes with objects, and you, you can set things to be part of that class, essentially. Interesting. And so that's what that's checking. How would that be used? Uh, well, if you just want to make sure that you created the right class or something, that would be how it would be used. So, how like, maybe you had a, a, a... Maybe your code wants to make sure that you're a student. In instance, you're all persons, but every person is either a teacher or a student. And then you want to make sure that that instance of April is a student. 
of the person class and you can start going down like that. Um, so we've talked about arithmetic, all right. So some of this stuff I'm gonna be going through pretty fast. Yeah, you're not even gonna do it. Because we've already gone over it, right? Everything so far should be reviewed. Mm -hmm. So the expression grouping. Function call. That doesn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, we've also gone over this. Whoa, what was that? Greater than, greater than, greater? What are those? I don't know how much they This has to do with bits, um, like the one and zero digital representations. You don't need to worry about it. That's that's such a crazy use case. They, there's no need to worry about it. All right, uh, data types. All right, so we know about number, string, and object. And there's Boolean as well. Undefined as well. If you You can also write your numbers in exponent scientific notation. See this 123E5 will come out as that. We we'll talked about booleans. We've also talked about arrays. Now, if you were to check the type of an array, it will return object. So just be aware of that. Mm, what is that? Because it's an object. Hey. What's going on with these cats right now? Attention? Yeah, I took them out earlier. Apparently not enough. So you said, let's see, how, see the type of right here. If you want to find out if this is a string, it will return string. So, um, C returns object, not array, for type of. Uh, if you want to check that it is an array, I'll show you real quick. There's a way of doing that. So, instead of checking that, what you can do that, you say array dot is array, and this will turn this will return either true or false. In this case, it returns boolean, uh, but which is a tr this is going to say true is what it's returning because it's returning the type of. So we have to get rid of type of, and we run it, and it'll say true. There we go. So there's a function in array to check if it is an array. So just be aware that if you're checking the type of something that's an array, it will return as an object. All right, that's data types, functions. Um, we've talked about functions. What's this one do? You know, for a cat who just ripped his nail off, he's being pretty feisty right now. So this one multiplies, right? It's getting the product. It's taking two parameters and then multiplying the name of it is my function. And the way we call it is just saying my function, parentheses, with the parameters in it. Um, I have to call the parameters too? No, this is an example. You can name them whatever you want as long as they don't match a keyword that already exists. And the actual real values that we're passing in, the four and three are the arguments. 
So 4 is the argument for the A parameter, and 3 is the argument for the B parameter. All right. Let's show you this one so you can kind of see it getting tied together. So we have this ID demo. We're targeting it. We're saying document .get element by ID demo. And then we're saying, hey, what do we want to change that value to? Well, we want to actually take the Celsius and convert it to Fahrenheit. And then we want to display it on the page. So uh, when our document runs, when this loads, it goes ahead and does that for us. And see how we're setting it on the side? Good. Now, if we don't use if we don't use the the um, if we don't use the parentheses, it will actually just print out the function. See how we just call two Celsius our function here, but we don't pass any parentheses into it. It actually is just all we're doing is sending over essentially a str string version of that function. Yeah, cool. That doesn't really make any sense, but okay. Like, I don't know what you would use that for. I don't know either. I've never actually used it for anything, so. <laughs> You're not the only one. Alright, so. I feel like they smell blood in the air and they're getting like very primitive now. Yeah. Um. Okay, so let's look at this. Our car. We instantiate our object with these curly braces, and then we have a key value pair. So in this case, when we say, hey, we're targeting our demo paragraph again, and we want to change the text to be equal to car.type. So our car.type is fiat. That's how we're able to set up a basic object. We've gone over this in the past as well. Although we haven't touched, you haven't really worked with objects too much. Same thing with the person, first name, last name. Now, if you did something like that, and uh, let's say you wanted to like search, like let's say you didn't know it was a fiat, but you typed in all the descriptors, would you be able to get fiat back? What do you mean? I don't know, like a search. If we were doing a search, like say we just wanted to get first name, is what you're saying? Yeah, but you didn't know his first name or to know, to ask that it was his first name. So you just put in all the information you knew. Would you be able to get yeah, I missing mean, information? Yeah, are, are you talk, I think you're talking about querying a database. So yeah. th there's a database, and what you're talking about is doing a search. Say we knew the age of 50 in this case. We would we could filter a database by everybody who's age fifty, and we could filter by another parameter, another parameter. But that's not what we're doing. Here. Oh, okay. But you might get that data back in an object or an array of objects. Okay. So there's, you can also access this with the um, property value. So remember, there's bracket notation for things as well. Um, so you can use person dot property or person bracket property it's the same thing usually the standard way is doing the person dot property can I light him up? no no? okay alright so you have bracket notation to access stuff uh, you can also have so you can also have functions as part of objects so see how we have this function parameter here full name and it's equal to a function that does some stuff. So when we so <laughs> so when we when we call full name, we're actually saying, hey, for this Whoever this is getting called for, in this case it's person, right? So this person, our uh, person, first name, plus space, plus last name, we're going to get John Doe. It's a function that we wrote within our... What are the pluses being used for there? Ticking cat to add a space. Oh. 
You see how we don't have a space oh, in the just name? Oh, the space, okay. So you can add functions to objects as well. Ignore that, you don't ever want to do that. Um, so we've, we've already talked, all right, so we talked about scope. We've talked about global and local scope. Something you really need to be aware of. Um, but basically, global scope, you can access things anywhere, and then it's various shades of local scope. With for loops, with, with functions, with with everything else. Various shades, huh? Huh, Dylan? Huh? <laughs> Alright, events. So, we're going to start, we've shown a couple of these things in the past, um, where we we can actually write on click where we can call a function. In this case, we're just putting straight up JavaScript mm -hmm. and setting the inner HTML instead of what time it is of the button to that time. Or excuse me, we're actually doing it to the demo, to the demo, and putting it out. So every time we do it, it's going to change. But this is called an event. Events are something where the user interacts with the page. And Do events have keywords too? Yeah, like on click. That's how we do it. That's an example of one. There's on change, meaning that an input has changed or element has changed. Uh, on mouse over, you hover over something. On mouse out, when you hover out of something, when you push the keyboard down, or on on page load. Mm. And there's more of these as as we move on and as we start using frameworks and things like that. All right, so strings. Uh, we've talked about strings pretty extensively. You can get the length of a string with dot length, just like an array. Um, what is it? Dot length, to get the length of a string, how long it is. Okay. Um, we've talked about how you can't use the same quotes in here. You have to use these escape characters, where if you want to use that, you have to do the forward slash. My little stop. Um, and there's some other ones on here. Uh, you won't really need to worry about this because we're going to move you into ES6 and there's a lot easier ways to do all this sort of stuff. Um, Milo. Come on, buddy. Alright, so string, 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 string methods. Let's just jump to there. Um... <laughs> okay, so dot length, I think you understand. Uh, let's talk about index of. So, say you want to find. Milo, I'll, I'll fucking kill you. Say you want to find the first occurrence of this word. So, in this case, we're trying to find locate. Locate. If we count the letters, that's zero is P. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the seventh index, we find what we're looking for locate. So index of will give you that. Mm. Okay. And this can go for anything that you want it to be. But it's only going to return the first occurrence of it. So not the rest of the word. Yeah, or if there's duplicates. But it's not giving a duplicate. There is a duplicate. Yeah, but it just says seven and doesn't tell you there's another one. I know that's what I'm saying. It's not going to tell you where this one is. It's going to tell you where the first. First one is. Yes. How do you get it to tell you where the second one is? It's a different. You probably have to write an algorithm. Well, you can do the last index of, which will actually return the last occurrence of it. But if there's three, there's a middle one that will fuck you up. Yeah, you gotta figure <laughs> something else out. 
Um, <laughs> no, there's a middle lurker. <laughs> and if it doesn't occur, any, if it doesn't come back, if, if it doesn't exist, it's going to return negative one. The middle child doesn't exist. No, no. I want if, a shirt that says no middle occurrence. If it doesn't exist, it returns negative one. Okay. I'm not moving. I'm trying to get you to to actually be good at coding them. It's a journey. Not a fun one, apparently. Alright, so um You can also start put a parameter in here as to where you want to start. So like we start on the 15th index and then we'll find the first index up. So you might write an algorithm that would do exactly that. Mm -hmm. Find one and then start from there. Find another one, start from there sort of thing. The search method is kind of similar. Um, I couldn't tell you what makes that one different from index of. They're kind of the same thing. All right, the slice method. So say you want to actually extract part of the string. It'll slice it out and give it to you. So say we wanted banana. When we run our code, it'll get us banana. And we pass in a starting index and an ending index. So let's look at here. We're, we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So then we go bam, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And we take out the word banana, and now we have banana. I think I remember doing something like this. Mm. But dot slice can be used to turn something into an array, right? So there's a, it doesn't turn anything into an array. Array has a similar function where you can slice it out of the array. Mm. Yeah, but we sliced something, we turned it into an array, but it was a string. I think you're getting a couple things confused. But we split a string into an array and then we joined it back together into a string. That's not what this is doing. This is just taking something out of a string. From a starting point and an ending point as parameters. Substring is similar to exactly what we did. Uh, so, the substring, you can do that as well. Now, there's sub str, which the only main difference is instead of actually putting. <laughs> What's going on today? Uh, <laughs> the only main difference is that you put how many letters you want to slice out and not the index number as the same parameter. Mm -hmm. But it's just another way of slicing out of a string. Right, uh, replace, you can out replace words. Do you want to get him down so he doesn't hurt himself? Oh, right. Crazy kitty. All right, so replace. Ooh, that's nice. It's okay, I don't know if I like it yet. It doesn't move at all. It's just foam. Yeah. Oh, I should you pay for that. 20 bucks. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, you got swindled! <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um.
Coding God needs a better desk. Coding God's been thinking about upgrading the desk and giving April this one. I want a bigger desk. Um, anyhow, uh, so you can also replace stuff as well. So you have you, you do that with the string replace method. First you say, hey, what do you want to replace? What word are, is it that you're looking to replace? The next one is, what do you want to replace it with? So please visit Microsoft will now be, please visit W3 Schools. Mm -hmm. So that's the replace method. Why would you just, why would you read? Why would you what? Like, okay, so if you like 50,000 pieces of code, you would just, instead of looking for it, you just replace it. No. It's a function that allows you to replace a string. Remember, coding is all about making things dynamic. So let's go back to the login example. We have a login. It says, hey, please log in, or thank you for logging in, Dylan. That string, if it says, please log in, we could do something where we want that to change to this other string when the if statement passes. The or if statement. Exactly. Okay. And you can pass in what's called a regular expression, which is basically formatting in here as well. Um, you show everybody your bamboo point. I did for a moment, yes. Like to uppercase or to lowercase? Um, so, to uppercase and to lowercase. Um, to uppercase will capitalize everything. So, if we run this, you'll see hello world. One, one way to, that you want to keep up, keep in mind, is when you're solving algorithms and things like that is that you're going to need to use to uppercase and to lowercase because things are case sensitive so you may want to convert those things what do you mean? if I'm comparing two words and one's capitalized and one's not they're never going to be equal so you may have to lower them use these functions to uppercase or to lowercase to use that to compare them properly yes okay so you have to uppercase you also have to lowercase or it's things lowercase. Um, we've talked about concat. I'll show it again. Concat adds words together. So we have hello and we have world. And we're saying text one. We want text three to be the output. We're saying text one dot concat. And then you can pass chain as many things together as you want. So in this case, we just have two. We're saying text one's hello. Then go ahead and add a space, then go ahead and add text two, which is hello world. So char at, say we want to know what the the character is at, we can say char at and then zero is h. That's another string method we can use to get the character at that location. Uh, another thing you can do is. Uh, Why does it say it's unsafe? This doesn't work in IE, but I use a piece of shit, so I don't care about that. Uh, but you can access a string this way as well. Are we are we going too fast? Where would you like me to? I don't know. I think you're just going that quickly because you don't really have that much to say about anything. So, I mean, if that's just all there is to say, it's just, you know. Because, I mean, we're at the section where, okay. I mean, do you want to go through and I'll answer questions? Would that be better? I don't know. So what does this function do? What is it? What function are we looking at? Dot length. It tells you how many there is in a string. It tells you the the length of the characters in the string. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does index of do? I don't know. Go back. Where is 
is it? Index up. So. So the first occurrence one. Yes. Takes in a string. Finds where. The first occurrence. So that's when we were talking about the first and the last and the non existent middle. Good. Um, last index of? What's that do? It locates the last index of something you're looking for. Search is kind of the same thing, so don't worry about that. Slice, what's slice do? How does it work? Slice will pull the first and the, will pull something out of a string. Yes. And what's the first value? The beginning of it. And the second value? The end of it. So. What if you don't know the first and the last? You write your code so that you do. Okay. So you can also, one thing I skipped over is that you can also go backwards. If you want to start at the end of the string, you do a uh, negative. So you go start working your way backwards. And then so like, start at, uh, like banana, start at the A and then go back to the B. So negative 12. So if we go, let's see here. If we were to say, Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Negative twelve. Remember, it starts like one here, uh, and then we were to go to negative six. What basically what happens is it would go backwards. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's cool. Yeah. Um. So if you don't know the rest of the string. It'll just take the rest of it and it'll slice from where you started. Okay? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Same thing with the, the negative. Substring works uh, in the same way, except it can't go negative. So it's not as dynamic as the other one, but, but it works. And then. Um, substring? Substring's like slice, except it can't go backwards. Uh -huh. What would you need that for? Uh, I couldn't tell you why one you use one the over the other. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's sub str, which is similar, but that second parameter is how many you want to take from that first parameter, not the index number. It's a little more intuitive, I would say, for most people. What do you mean? So we want to start at index seven. And then we want to go six spaces past that to slice it. That's all it's saying. Oh, okay. So kind of like what you would do as a human being and so what a computer would... I yeah. suppose so, yes. Um, we've talked about replace. You replace the words. Let's see. Uh, to uppercase, what's that do? turns everything uppercase and then you have to lowercase where it turns everything lowercase so it's easily compared. And how does concat work and what does concat do? Concat uses plus signs to put strings together. Char at? Char stands for character. I don't think we remember this one. What do you, so char at will return the index value pass in of the string value. So if we pass in one, it will return a capital E. Why? Because remember, each string, every character is an index value. Mm. So when we say char at zero, it's H. When we say char at one, it's E. e. So on and so forth. And if we say negative two? Uh, I don't think it goes negative. No. Let's try. You want to try it? Let me try it. All 
Are these commands important? I thought most people just reference them. Are you talking about the functions? Um, the reason we're going over them is because April doesn't know they exist and she's not quite there looking up documentation yet. So we're going over, we're gonna be going over the string functions, the number functions, the array functions, the Boolean functions. Maybe the object functions. There's only a couple though. So, but we're going over the main methods, anyhow, strings, numbers, um, arrays. I'm covering this so that she knows they exist, so that when she's trying to solve these algorithms, she knows that there, uh, there are tools that are available for her. Uh, so it looks like the negative doesn't work. Sad face. Yeah. Uh, we've already talked about accessing the string value like that. Dot char at is the better way of doing it, though. Okay, so what's the difference between that one and this one, then? This won't work in IE. The other one's just better. You can, you can do it like this, but it doesn't really matter. So, um, do you remember what split does? We used it yesterday at the end of... Yeah, so I'm a little fuzzy on the details, I guess, because I was under the impression that it takes a string and turns it into an array. Yes. But that's what I said, and you said no. Who? You. That's pro most definitely not what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what you said, but if I said no, it was not. So, let's take a look at this. So if we split on a comma, and this is our string, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to return each index split on an A. My, uh, function, my function, bar string. So I was saying that string equals A, B, C, D, E, F. Then it's saying bar argument equals, so why is that a variable? We're storing the, we're taking what's in the string and we are now. I didn't know vari variables could do that. Yes, you've seen this a couple times where like, on one end we call a function and that returns a value. So it's var function. No. So here, what's going on here is we have a function that is connected to the on click event. So when we click this, it runs our my function. Do you, you get that? So, oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so in my function, in the block code of my function, a function of my function. We have a string. You have a variable string, which equals to that. A, B, C, D, E, and F. Then you have another variable, R. For array. For array equals string dot split. And we're splitting it every comma. The split is what breaks it up into the array. I just didn't know you put it in a variable. You can, yes, because we have to store it. This returns a value. So when it returns a value... So if you don't use it in a var, it won't store it? No. Where would it go? Nowhere. It wouldn't do anything. Because it returns a value to nowhere. So either you... I didn't get far enough. We didn't get far enough on the string for me to know that. Okay, so there. this returns this string in array format. And then we return this, see? It goes A, B, C, D. Yeah, so we, that's what they were saying we could have done yesterday with the algorithm. And I showed you that. Yeah. Yeah. So the split is a common one to break a string up into an array. And if you want to break it up into characters, you would do it in no space. Okay, I think it's a good place to stop. We, we touched on some string methods. Um, I'm a little tired today. So, I'm going to bed after this. Yeah, I'm gonna go make something to eat and then go to bed. You make it more food? I'm gonna make dessert. Not my dessert. No, no, of course not. I'm eating my dessert right now. I'm not going to bed because you're gonna eat it all. <laughs> all right, baby, you wanna. All right, guys, um, sorry if I was a little drained today. 
Uh, I am, man. I'm stressed about work and stuff, so I, I apologize for that. I, I try not to be on here, but we're in day 28. You're going to have good days. We're going to have bad days. Um... I'm even thinking about wrapping this up on day 30, to be honest with you. Uh, but I don't think I could do it to myself. Hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, it's been hard for us. Good night, Joshua. It's, it's just been a lot especially with us moving and work so. yeah but uh we'll keep going today was just a, a hard day for me anyhow guys um thank you for watching don't forget to join our facebook group by the way baby have i told you how much our facebook group is killing it i'm dropping little breadcrumbs about things that are coming with the channel too in there yeah, join join the Facebook group, you guys. A lot of a lot of things are coming. Dylan has been very very excited about what's gonna be happening. Yeah, Kevin Troy. I was thinking that too. I was thinking maybe we don't have to do it consecutively. Now we have to. Okay. Apparently, hundred days is consecutive. Yeah. Uh, so we're at two. We're getting three hundred thirty-eight this week. We're wow. At almost twenty-four hundred. Not too shabby. Um. Thank you, nice job, fam. Yeah, we'll get there, guys. Um. Okay, so today we went over string functions. So remember, let's review. You can get the length. You can combine strings. You can cut things out of strings, and. And you get you can, you can uh, locate things. You can locate parts, characters, whole words, and you can break it a string into a. You can. <laughs> you can um, break a string up into a array. That's mm -hmm. what. You now know all those string methods exist. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the number methods and maybe the array methods. Okay. Good. All right, guys, that's it for today. Um, I don't want to hear about your stressful life, Kevin. I'm sorry. <laughs> My life is... More, you know what's funny is, like, how you were saying that hearing another stressful person, you're like, oh, that's nothing compared... Or that that's a lot. What's funny is, like, other people's stress stresses me out, so... <laughs> yeah. I wish you the best, though, man. You're a good guy. Yeah. Uh, much, much serenity to you. Something like that, yeah. Something. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're sticking to the plan, man. Uh, I'm just... I'm probably going to stop working on side projects f for the while, for the bit. For the next week or so. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I think I'd be alright if I could exercise, but... I know. My hand isn't quite there it's yet. It's almost. Anyhow, guys, uh, join the Facebook group. 13 grand? Jesus. Would you buy a car? <laughs> um, join the Facebook group. Support me on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Coming 360. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow for day 29. And as always, code long and prosper. Bye.